things changed a lot over the years as we went to the canning plant. Uh, as you know, in the in the 60s, I, as I say, I came back 65, 66, I guess, 66, I guess I came back. I was one of the first to plant the clingstone type peach. I had still planted a number of two other varieties of freestone peaches that went to the cannery because we still weren't sure of where we were going on this clingstone peach with the cannery. Prior to St. David's closing, we used to bring a lot of our fruit down here to the cannery in Niagara and the Lake, which is now the Pillar and Post. And I can remember my dad having to grow, we had to grow canning tomatoes because they wanted tomatoes to get a larger peach contract. So if you wanted to sell them more peaches, you had to grow tomatoes for them. But these things change. And over the years, we've, we've seen it change. But back when you had freestone peaches, you had to sort them by maturity. And if they weren't ripe enough, you, and you put them in, a, in about a 35 pound box, if they weren't ripe enough, all the farmers had to put them on their lawns and set them up so that the sun could hit them. And we had to ripen them so that they were ready to process when we brought them up. There was no cold storage. There was a small storage at the old St. David's plant, but it wasn't very large. Niagara and Lake didn't have any storage. So when these came in, these processing type cling stones came in, which are the, the hard flesh that are all done by machine, with the rubber fingers that twist them off. And Now we could go to bulk bins. We, we go to a half ton bin. And in the old days when we delivered, most of us delivered a little bit at a time. A half ton truckloads were very common. My dad always had a larger truck that would hold between five and 10 tons. So when we delivered, we had a fair size, you know, maybe at least two or three tons on it. But you would be lined up to get into the cannery when, when it, we first started to go there because of all these small little operations and every load had to be had to be ex examined and, and you had an inspector to check maturity as well as for other things that had to be looked at, insects and diseases. So you would often be lined up for a half a mile to get in and so it took a long time to get through. When we went to the processing clings, because now we can go in larger loads, and more, more, more and more growers, and as we all have, when I started off, I didn't have a storage either, but I have a storage as soon as I built my own shed back in, in the 60s. But prior to that, we didn't have a coal storage on the farm. My brother was one of the first to start one on the farm that he took off as, on a satellite next to my dad. So we had used that to some extent, but when we got to these, these, Clings and we were going to St. David's. By this time, that's the only one left. You could go up, and you there would never be more than five or ten trucks ahead of you. And most of them would often be big semi trailers, because these fellows could bring in twenty ton loads, because mm -hmm. they they had gone to big acreages, and a lot of them just sorted them right in the field. They just let their men dump them in. Uh, in our case, we always brought ours in, and we Ann and I poured them, and anything that had a mark, we we would again take out because we could sell that to local people who came out of the city. You know, it was just on the skin. So we would still get up to the point though where I was delivering ten-ton loads, and it was far nicer because I could pick up the telephone and call the, the scale house at, at the canning factory and ask the girl that was doing the weighing, how, how, how busy are you right now? And because I was only a mile and a half away from the, the plant, if she said, well, there's just nobody right now, I, I would zip right up with a, I, could, I would have the load pretty close to being ready and I could soon load it on, away you go. So it changed things dramatically, really, to go to the cannery. It was um, a similar type thing, even with the fresh market things. At one time, to go through Virgil, you would see farmers lined up and down the Niagara Stone Road waiting to get in to Niagara Fruit and Veg out there. And the lines would be 
half a mile long, each in, air, in three directions. But that was when we had a lot of the small five and 10 acre and 15 acre farms all delivering together. And uh, that has all now changed too. We, we have, we've gone from a few hundreds of farmers to just a few farmers. Really, it's, uh, it's been a dramatic change in the last 15 or 20 years. So I uh, may be back to the 70s, but by the 70s, we were still having fairly long, long lines.